In this video, I want to explain why much of the current research and studies on chronic fatigue syndrome are misleading and often create more questions for patients instead of providing them with answers. Before we get started, one disclaimer, this video builds heavily on what I talked about in my video on the true causes of chronic fatigue syndrome. Please watch it beforehand because you can really only understand the shortcomings of much of the current research if you also understand the true drivers of the condition. Basically, what we did in that video was distill CFS into the following formula. Chronic stress plus nutritional depletion plus an acute traumatic experience plus optionally genetic predisposition. When I show this formula to beginners, they're usually both happy that they finally have an explanation of what's going on, but they're also confused. What about all the other research you read about online? What about the studies that show a dysfunction of the immune system, or viral triggers like Epstein-Barr virus, or nervous system imbalances in patients? Before I tell you what role all these potential triggers actually play in CFS, let's summarize the current evidence again. The vast majority of chronic fatigue research builds on one or more of the following theories. One, the viral theory. This is one of the oldest theories because many early chronic fatigue cases seem to occur after infections, like I said before, for example, from Epstein-Barr virus or mono. Next, you have the immune system theory. There are also clusters of cases that showed abnormalities in immune function of CFS patients, both in the form of an underactive but also an overactive immune response, similar to autoimmune patients. Third, we have the mitochondrial theory. This one has been gaining traction in more recent years, as it was shown how the cell's energy metabolism, which is situated in the mitochondria, can break down either from external stressors like toxins or internal stressors like nutrient deficiencies. And lastly, you have the brain and nervous system theory. This theory suggests a malfunction or abnormality in the brain and or nervous system of CFS patients. As you can see, there's no shortage of theories that try to pinpoint what is going on here. Add to that the possibility of inflammation, which can affect all of these theories, and you have the perfect cocktail for confusion. To help you see through this labyrinth of information, I will now include another lesson for my program. Together with the video on the true causes of chronic fatigue, it is part of my program's introduction, which lays the groundwork for possible healing later on. After you've just watched the last lesson, you're probably both happy for an explanation of what is going on, but also confused. What about all the other research you read about online? What about the studies that show a dysfunction of the immune system? What about those that say it's a chronic virus, like Epstein-Barr virus, or the research that found increased inflammation in certain parts of the body? To understand how all these studies fit into the explanation of CFS I just gave you, you have to understand how medical diagnosis and research work. The diagnosis and treatment of basically any illness rests on a specific framework that can generally be summarized as follows. From symptoms, to examination and tests, to diagnosis, to treatment. What that means is that if you feel unwell, you go to the doctor, tell him or her about your symptoms, they will then examine you and run a few tests if necessary, and then based on your symptoms and the results of the examination, they will give you a diagnosis, which they will then use as the basis for your treatment. This approach works very well for traditional illnesses or health problems. For example, let's assume you have constant knee pain. So you go to the doctor, you tell them about your symptoms, and they will have you do an MRI. Once they have the results, you might see that there is a ligament or tendon that is torn, which might require surgery. As you can see, based on the combination of your symptoms and tests, your doctor was able to give you a diagnosis and then offer the right treatment. Basically, our whole medical system rests on this approach. The problem is that it breaks down if one or more of the steps cannot be done, which is the case in CFS patients. Not only are your symptoms vague and often change, the disease itself also doesn't show up on standard blood tests. There is no specific organ or part of the body that is always affected, so there is no single diagnosis that can be given. Instead, it is a conglomerate of symptoms that are hard to pin down. 
Add to the fact that most patients also suffer from mental health issues and you have the perfect recipe for confusion. Since most doctors are only trained in the framework that I just gave you, they don't know what to do, so they either send you to another doctor or prescribe you something for your symptoms, which in most cases means antidepressants since they do realize that stress plays a role here. Such illnesses that the traditional medical approach has a hard time dealing with are often referred to as syndromes or disorders, which really just means a group of symptoms that occur together. This also explains how conditions like chronic fatigue syndrome, irritable bowel syndrome, and acute stress disorder are related. They're all difficult to diagnose and treat. This inability to diagnose correctly doesn't just create a problem for doctors, but also for researchers. Obviously, when your whole approach rests on the ability to link specific symptoms to specific diseases, your first reaction is to continue to look for that one thing that connects all patients. That's why researchers continue to search for the one cause of CFS. Early on, they thought it was Epstein-Barr virus. Then they thought it was Lyme disease or a dysregulation of the immune system. Nowadays, it seems to be chronic inflammation in certain parts of the body, like the nervous system, spinal cord, or brain. Now, I'm not negating the researchers' findings. These things are definitely part of the issue. But if you remember what I said in the last lesson, that many people confuse their last straw with the underlying cause. That's exactly what a big part of the research on CFS is doing. It's confusing the effect with the cause. Once your body has experienced years of stress, has accumulated a high amount of pollutants and toxins, and spent most of its reserves in vital nutrients, it is no longer able to completely fight off viruses and bacteria or keep inflammation in check. But that doesn't mean the virus, bacteria, or inflammation caused the problem. They were just the result of it, or in acute cases, the breaking point. If they actually were the true underlying cause, everyone with CFS would show markers of Epstein-Barr virus, Lyme disease, or some other unique nervous or immune system imbalance. But that's not at all what the studies show. Instead, they document patients from all kinds of different backgrounds, both in terms of their diagnostic history and biochemical background. The only common denominator we see in basically all patients is severe stress, be it emotional, physical, or chemical, often together with subclinical nutrient deficiencies. This also explains why many patients fail to recover even when the supposed cause, for example an infection, has already been cured. The symptoms continue because the infection was just the trigger, but the actual cause was the long-term depletion of all the emotional, physical, and nutritional resources that your body needs to stay healthy and produce energy every day. The longer you continue in such a state, the more likely you are to then develop what most of the research focuses on, so inflammation, nervous system imbalances, or immune system problems. Understanding the limitations of the traditional framework that goes from symptoms to examination to diagnosis to treatment will help you find your peace with doctors and medical professionals. I know that almost every CFS patient has had someone tell them how they're imagining their symptoms, how there's nothing wrong with them, or how they just need to rest a little more. All these sentences are based on a fundamental misunderstanding of the problem, which is rooted in a medical framework that doesn't work for your disease. The rest of the course will help you develop a better framework that is specifically designed for people like you.